Well, good day and welcome to part two of the interview with myself, Grant Lee and Dr. Thomas Cohen. I thought it was important for me to come on and explain a few things because um, as Christians, we do have an adversary. And whenever you're doing something for Christ and for the kingdom of Christ, the adversary tries to raise its ugly head and make sure that it's disrupted, should we put it that way. And there's no difference that happens right here. Um, so we thought we were recording. We did actually press the button to record the second part of the interview. And the Holy Spirit said, check. When I did check, Thomas was in mid-flow and <laughs> the interview wasn't being recorded. So he's in mid-flow and um, I decided, you know what? I'm not going to get him to backtrack and repeat. Because when someone is speaking the word of God and telling the truth, you don't get the same effect if you say, stop, let's start again. So as you see, as you continue to watch the part two of the interview, Thomas is in mid flow. Or should I say Tommy is in mid flow? Um, um, but nevertheless, he's talking about um, Emperor Isolasi and, um, you know, People of the Rastafarian faith would believe what they believe. And um, Tommy is giving an account of um, his meeting. Uh, he's actually met Emperor Isolasi's son and spoken on um, different subjects of um, who his father is, etc., etc. I'll let you listen for yourself. Um, but before we jump back in, um, that's the reason why I came on to give this disclaimer. Uh, thank you for taking the time for stopping by. Do subscribe if you haven't already to the channel and do share with your friends as well. Enjoy part two of this great video. Take care now. came to Jamaica, even why he established the church in Jamaica, and what he was saying. That's why one of the most important words that Bob Marley had written is, give us the teachings of his majesty because we don't want the devil's philosophy. And what was the teachings of his majesty? First, that he gave the Bible to everyone who required it. And he says, for whatsoever language the Bible is written, it remains one and the same. It's a guide to your past, your present, and your future. Within it, you find the truth for yourself. What other book would you find such amazing words as this that says, Come unto me, all you are labored, and I have laden, and I will give you rest. For my personal sake, I glorify in the Bible. He has also said that a man's life without Christ is like a rudderless ship. When it comes upon the torrents of life, it will just be smashed into small pieces. And he glorified and he established the church here in, in, um, in Jamaica and all over the world. He established the Ethiopian Orthodox Church that people would have understood that he is not the Christ. And that is why he sent people like um, Abaman Defro, Abuna, yes, um, yes. The Abuna, to Jamaica and in the West to establish the church for people to understand that he think they would understand more about himself, about that he is not Christ. And I've even recently met with his grandson who was so happy that I would be out here preaching the gospel, being in Rastafari to preach that his majesty is not the way, the truth and the life. He is a man of God. And he's made his contribution. He's built many churches. He has given away the Bible. He's asked for the Bible to be interpreted in language that even the commonest of mankind can understand it, that they too will know the truth. And um, and so I I did not have, and I still do not really have a, um, a big problem. Yes, there were some churches who rejected me. Really? Yes, I've been into a church with my wife, um, Carleen, and when they saw me in the church, one of the elders came up to me and said, sir, 
um, what are you doing here? I said, I'm, I'm with that lady. He said, well, you're going to be here while she's ministering? I says, yes. I said, well, can you go to the back of the church and stand up? And he showed me where to go in the dark. And, and, and so just to be clear, and just to be clear, Tommy, just to be clear, right? Yes. This is all because you were you were wearing your hair dreadlocks. Am I right in saying oh, that? Oh yes, yes, yes. So 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 yes. so so the question about you know how can you be a Christian and be you know wearing dreadlocks? Um, you were but told to go. Some, that's what I'm saying. That's that's um, I, I, the Christianity doesn't. I mean, to me, Christianity. Yes. Doesn't make you a uh, dreadlocks. Don't make you Christian or or Rasta. It's your heart. Absolutely. It's your renewing of Absolutely. Your heart and your mind. And just because and just to, just to reiterate what it says in the Bible. The Bible says, "Come as you are." Yes. I, I want to. We want to make this perfectly clear for somebody. I know we're talking, yes. and I know I know that um you know the the interview and everything else. But there are people that really to this very day don't understand that simple, simple um, part of the Bible that says, come as you are. I've been in situations where uh, uh, a man or a woman wearing dreadlocks were told that, yes, you want to give your heart to Christ. That's great. Um, but within a few but, weeks... But your dread and yes, but, but within a few weeks' time, you're going to have to get rid of that 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 thing that you've got oh, around. Oh, yes, I've, I've heard those My goodness. I, and I, 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 to this day, you know, and, and we're talking about people that are leaders in Christian churches um, that, are, that are behaving this way. It's, it's incredible. So you were told to go and stand at the back of the church while Carlin yes. was getting ready to minister, right? Is that right? Yes. But then the preacher, the actual senior pastor came in. Yes. And said before she comes on, they're going to ask this gentleman here to to address us. And I mean, the people are climbing up the walls um, because and then the, the pastor says, I'm not going to preach today. Brother Tommy, you continue preaching. And the, the, the elder came to me and really apologized after that. Um, but there are still lots of that. But, you know, the times are turning because right now in the churches, I when you look on the platform, a lot most of the musicians now are dreadlocks musicians. Yes. They are dreadlocks preachers, you know, because we have we have we have gotten over that in some way. But some people are still in the old uh what wherever they get that from that yeah old thing of uh, I guess this I is guess how I guess you, look. Yeah, I guess you're gonna find that, you know, up and down the island. You know, you're going to find that there are people that are still of that sort of old opinion that the only way that you can be a Christian is to not be wearing dreadlocks. Because I guess back in the day, they were spawned, they were shunned. You know, yeah, if you were if you wore if you wore dreadlocks, you were like a leper. <laughs> yeah, you see, one of the things is though, when you look at it grandly, why if you look at uh, a portrait of Jesus? He's with long hair, and he's he's is really a white man. Why why is that? And if the truth be told, then if Jesus was a man with long hair, and he's coming from from um, Nazareth, as such as a Nazarene, then his hair to be long would have to be locks because it can't grow locks. You really can't grow your hair long if you comb it. Keep combing it right, or you keep cutting it off. But that's not even the, the, the thing, you know. The fact of the matter is that Jesus comes for one, he comes for all. He's the God of yesterday, the God of today, the God of tomorrow. He loves us all. There's nothing created that was not created by God. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is all three in one. And in spite of that, because sometimes these are the strategies of the enemy that will come up so that we reject that I think this was, was what was happening with Haile Selassie when he decided to say whatsoever language the Bible is written, it remains on one and the same. Because even us, our black people, were having a problem in saying that King James wrote the Bible, King James is a white man, he <laughs> interpreted the Bible, so he must have done for his own interests. Yes. Right? Yes. So Selassie said, no. 
Whatsoever language it is written, it remains one and the same. It's a guide to your past, your present, and your future. Within it, you find the truth for yourself. Amen. I can show you the truth, but when the truth has to be revealed to you personally. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got and to so say this. Man, yeah. I've got to say this, right, Tommy? Just like how, just like how um, Christians uh, behave a certain way with regards to you know wearing dreadlocks and all the rest of it. You've said some things there, right? Which leads me to ask this question: Surely, um, there are uh, people of Rastafarian faith that are saying, "Tommy, what are you talking about? What are you talking about?" Mm -hmm. Haile Selassie um, promoted uh, Jesus Christ and said that he wasn't the savior. What are you talking about? This is the man that we 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 say is the King of Kings and he's Jehovah. And so, so there's a fight there as well, right? Am I right in saying that? If you you know there is a fine what there is a fight in terms of rusters saying um the opposite to what Christians are saying you know with regards to how how Selassie um you've just said some things that would for for some rusters they would say my brother you don't know what you're talking about I know of course of course <laughs> Rasta brethren have looked at me and said. Brother Tommy, your backslide <laughs> <laughs> as a raster, you know? But um, the, the, the truth is the truth. And sometimes all of this is a created thing by the enemy to, to, to divert us from the truth. Yeah. Because yeah. that is why, yeah. Because even up to now, when we look, you know, let me ex explain this to you. One, you, you know that part of my journey in the music is being the marketing manager for Bob Marley's um, Tough Gun Records. Yes. And I've been to Africa with Bob. I've been to United States with Bob. I produced the One Love Peace concert. And one of the biggest untold story about Bob Marley is that on the 4th of November, 1980, he was baptized in the name of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh, by praise Abba God. Hallelujah. I right. am so pleased that you that you have revealed this, Tommy. Uh, you know, I, I, I knew already, I knew already, but I wanted it to be on record that you know this and uh, the world needs to know that. Oh, yes. He was baptized. Baptized. Okay. Yeah, I've sat with Rita about it. She was there. The children were there. Right, I've sat with Abba, who baptized him, and Abba explained to me on the baptism of Bob, and he said when Bob came, he said Bob really wanted to be baptized for quite a while, but Did he was concerned about what some folks were saying and what not have you, and he, when he came, he said for three days, he decided to go in repentance. And then he said he was ready to be baptized. And he called for his wife and his children. And he said the Holy Spirit, the kabod of the Holy Spirit came down in that room so heavy that he said, Brother Tommy, and I, I said to him, how did you go about baptizing Bob? Did you ask him if he accepted Jesus? And he says, yes, I do it as I usually do. Do you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? And are you confessing that I have sinned? But I decide from this day on, I will follow you as my Lord and Savior. And he said, yes, Bob said that. And he then baptized him in the name of his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, it's one of those stories that... Um, people have heard about but no one is the funniest thing people don't want to um, elevate because I guess whatsoever the, the media or the value but I did and I will say this that and and he's still a journalist I took after Abba told myself Carlene and I about that situation I said Abba I'm going for one of our renowned journalists at the 
the Glena Company, and I went for a brother called Balfour Henry, and he took his little cassette to, to record it. And when I didn't see the story come out, I asked him what happened to the story. And he told me that, um, that he had lost the cassette. I said, but you know what? There's still a couple of interviews that you could have seen Abaman Defra um, giving the story of the baptism of, of Bob. And one, one thing I've learned from this mm. is that, is that, you know, Rasta Brethren reads the Bible. And I believe that every time I'm confronted with the, with the situation of how can Rasta be, um, be a Christian, I always say, well, where did Rasta get the name from? Ras come from Ras Makanen, means duke or prince. Ras Tafari, Tafari was the name of His Majesty Elias last before he was crowned. Yes. And so it came from that teaching. And therefore, it, that's why it came back to what I said very early. Give us the teachings of His Majesty. Because we all read the same Bible, but sometimes we have pride in ourselves. And I believe that the Rastafari movement is a good movement. It's a it's 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 a really clean movement for black people and a lot of it but we have to accept in the end that jesus christ is lord and savior and he is really the king of kings lords of lords conquering line of a tribe of judah and i cannot really go against a lot of people for saying this um about Haile selassie being that because it was actually the church himself who endorsed the title of King yes. of Kings, Lord of Lords. But I think everything is for a purpose and it's for a revelation. And that what was happening in Africa was that other religions were taking over Africa, right, left, and center. And he had to be that, that person who, inside of Africa, re-established and so the light was drawn to him as the father of Africa. And that's why he had to make his revelation. And if you read the books on Haile Selassie, you will see how many times that he has gone into his purpose of fulfilling this establishment of Christ being Lord and Savior. And see how many times he has, through the miracles of God, won the wars and the things that were in front of him and the principles that he established between the church and 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 the, the governments and church and state and look at some of the principles that he said he believes that a man cannot advance um what would you call now materially unless he's advanced spiritually and yes. that's why he put the bible in the hands of every man who so desires it amen Amen. I'm glad that you made that clear, Tommy. Um, us as Christians, we know that the devil is a liar and he is the author of confusion. So, yeah, we know where the confusion is coming from, right? It's coming from our arch enemy um, to the point where I must be really, really honest and confess this. There was the beginning of our interview where we started talking. It's like the recording just got messed up. And it wasn't till a little bit later on uh, where uh, our recording started to come back and 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 so forth. We missed uh, the, the the front end of the interview. But I'll say this: what you've shared with us so far has been um, some people would say mind blowing. You know, even the fact that Bob gave his his life to Christ, um, the truth about it's not the dreadlocks that makes you a raster or a Christian, uh, the truth that the Bible says, come as you are. These things that we've stated so far are on record and are very important. I want to talk to um, the uh, relationship that you had with Bob, because not only did you, um, you know, help to develop 
Tough Gong Studio, and um, which is now the museum. The museum is there in Jamaica, Hope Road. Um, but you had that relationship with Bob Marley um, in terms of, you know, you mentioned about some of the earlier recordings. Tell us, when was the first time you actually met Bob? Um, and, you know, tell us about the relationship up to the point where he passed away. How did you meet Bob Marley? Well, <laughs> I, I, this, is, this is amazing because I knew people like Rita before Bob. Okay, his wife. And, uh, oh, <laughs> well, Rita, Rita um, and her friends, Beryl, and um, they had their singing group together. But then Rita, for some reason, when we were in the Miracles, we would go around to um, close, very close to um, to Trenchtown to rehearse. And we would rehearse at, at this gate. And we, we would see this, um, this young girl on the inside for some reason. Why would we go there? Oh no, it's not even explainable. Why would we go to Trenchtown to rehearse? Mm. And there was this young girl in there. And then I started to, to go to, um, Wall Grove College, and um, while going there, sh she was going to um, some Don Robin, Don Robin, hi, oh, yeah. is it Don Robin, hi, right, and then she would come along and by the end of Carib, and this was the weirdest thing, I mean, they call it weird, but it was <laughs> a great thing. I would just meet this this young lady, and I would take her books and walk her home give her books and then go off. I don't know because my aunt used to say, be a, be a good looking gentleman. Be, a, be sure. a gentleman, be a gentleman. So that's what you did. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, so we ended up rehearsing at her, her, um, her gate. Then Bob, when we went to record at Cox's, I, I, one evening I turned up and saw this this youngster lying on a door at around Cox and somebody, I don't know if it was a joke, said, Your yeah, man, him sleep, him sleep on the him sleep on the door on this door that they had at the back. Mm. However, one morning now, we were Christmas morning, we were at um the Ward Theatre. They were doing Christmas morning show. And so they were called the Wailing Wailers. And we were there and singing on the same show. And he was in the back. And he had a spliff. And I said, you smoke this thing. I said, yeah, man, it's it good for you. So him, him give it to me. And I take my two drawers off of it. And I went away and laughed with my friend and said, him said this thing, do I don't do anything for anybody, you know? But we got to know each other then at that point. Yes. And then as time went on, I remember even him trying to enter the festival song competition. I think it was, was even the same year that Eric won, but he didn't make it to the top 10. Okay. Um, but as as time went on um and we, we got to talk to each other even checking out a few girls with each other as you and, do uh, as you do <laughs> huh? as you do uh, as young men yeah 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 but then i think the the real the real meeting came together when um when I started to do um, to have talent corporation, and at talent corporation, he um, he came to me, and he said to me, "It's now." He came to me and he said, "He, I had done 
he had gone to England. Yes. Right. He had gone to England and um, he was he was coming home. He had okay, he had come to me and he said to me, they won't play his music on radio. Okay. And at the time I was handling all of these guys and he was watching what I was doing. And he said to me, um, I must listen to some songs that he had. And so I, I went and listened to the songs. And I said, um, all right, here it go. I, I, will, I will distribute the songs for you. So I said, this is the best song you have now in this lot, which was a song called Natty Dread. Um, but I wouldn't want to put out the best song first. So the second best one to me was One Drop. Feel it in the one drop. And oh, we find time to oh, rap. Rap. So <laughs> I put out One Drop and One Drop sneak right up to number one. And then I put out Natty Dread and Natty Dread was like a, a phenomenon. And, and in between there, the Cimarrons in England had a guy in the Cimarrons, um, gosh, what's his name? And they, they did a song, one of Bob new written song called um, Cold Ground Was My Bed Last Night and Bob Was My Pillow. Talking Blues. And so they did Talking Blues yeah. within the same time. I thought Bob would have gotten upset because Talking Blues teared on the place and became a number one song. And they had approached us from England to put out this song. Right. So now this now built a relationship. And he had asked me then after that to put out the album. And I said, no, because the deal of the album, Bob was quite a businessman. Yeah. But the deal of the album didn't suit me because I thought the more I sell the album, is the deeper I'm getting into debt. Because what what I was making from the album couldn't keep, you know, manufacturing, making the jackets and printing the records. And so he gave it to another company. And um, Is that is that where Chris Blackwell came 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 in? No, no, this is um this is this is after Chris Blackwell. This is after. Okay. Cool. Blackwell, but he was now establishing his his distribution in Jamaica. Bob did his distribution here, not Chris Blackwell. Okay. Right. And so um so that went on and um and then the other movement was about the the One Love Peace concert. Now that um, that is a big deal because Jamaica was in a, a in a state where you know you had political parties um, going at each other, and Bob had to come in between all of that. Right? Tell us about that. Well, what happened? Um, <clears throat> I knew of, of, of you know. I knew the guys out of um, out of the West. Yes. And Claude was um, was a friend of mine. Claude Massop was actually with me um, during Baba Boom. Okay. Duke we got Claude to accompany me everywhere I was going. All right. So you had your bodyguard. <laughs> because what <laughs> you said it, <laughs> but. Um, so I knew Claudie. Then Claudie had to go off to England too okay. to take away himself from Jamaica. And then Bob, with the whole um, situation with him on the, the um, Smile Jamaica concert, okay, which caused, you know, where they tried to shoot him. They tried to shoot him, yeah. And so he went, he went in, into, um, into England also. So... What happened in England is that Claudia gave me a call. Yeah, no, yes, no, I can tell you this. 
that there are so many stories about this. So many different stories. You you give us you give us how one. it really went down. You tell us how it really yeah. happened. But Claudia, Claudia called me because I was a concert man. I was now doing the concerts here in Jamaica for um for like, you know, the Epiphany Wednesday night series and all of that. So Claudia called me and said to me, Boy, Tommy, Bob coming back to Jamaica, you know, and wanted to come back. And I think it would be good if we do a concert with Bob. That um that boy people would come out to this concert. And so so I think you should organize this concert. And then so I said, all right, I'll do it. So then he put Bob on the phone to me. And Bob said, yes, he's coming. He wants to get the concert, but boy, I'm have to have unity with all the different things. Them, um, he wants unity with the different communities of our war in, in Jamaica, and he wants to have unity amongst the different um, Rasta groups in Jamaica, Naya Bingi and. The Ethiopian Orthodox and have, although they are Christian, but and twelve tribes of Israel and the Ethiopian Federation groups and the different groups. And um, if I can organize that, um, that would be good. And so I decide to take on this whole thing. I and then I kind of moved over to Hope Road where he gave me an office there to work from. Um, so that was what really happened now. And of course, the whole thing, not just getting the different organizations of Rasta together, but also to get the unity of himself, Peter Tash, because the whalers were apart. They were different. Everybody was now going their own way. And if we could get them together. So I he sent me out to meet with Bonnie. And I met with Bonnie. Bonnie Whaler. And Bonnie Whaler. Yeah. And I also went Claude Mass upon myself, went to meet with Peter Tosh. And um never forget that meeting. Not at two of them, I never forget the two meetings. Bonnie. Bonnie was like kind of a reserve about what is this? We're having this concert out of whose idea, what not have you. And even some of the Rastas were talking about um, we, we can't just go down this path of a concert because it's been 400 years. Because there's an attachment between the 400 years yes. of the children of Israel in uh -huh. Egypt. Uh -huh. um, sorry. No <laughs> problem. In, no problem, I know you. Years. Yeah. 400. You hear me? Yeah, I'm hearing you. Yeah. Tony. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sorry about that. Of the 400 years of, um, of black people and oppression. And of course, so all of this, anyway, um, we got together and did this One Love Peace concert. Um, of course, I was saying that Peter Tosh had really kind of a prophesied over mass up that the result of this for him would have been six six and we asked what was six six he says six foot six that's the size of a grave <laughs> yeah um, yes sir. well the only piece you will get is six six he said he says six six he says yes six foot six rest in peace that's the mm. piece you will get. Yeah. And um, however, you know, the concert became history. Um, one of the best ever run concerts. Um, all that thing with Manly and Siaga, which took place, yes. was never a part of the plan. It wasn't. Um, when you, uh, it wasn't no, a part of your plan, Tommy. Of, you didn't organize that. No. This all happened spiritually, okay. all on stage, um, to bring peace and unity and that was part of the 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 
the God-given instructions to Bob. Because when we looked at what happened just before um, that took place, when he said this, the, the moon is high in the sky, don't ask I why. Is a natural mystic blown through the year. And mm. he went into the spiritual dance and he danced into a spiritual frenzy. And then he almost comes out of it. He says, I'm calling on these two leaders to come up here and to declare peace amongst the people. It did work, yeah. didn't it? It did actually work for, for, for that it, period. Yes, of time. it worked for a while. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It did. We thank God. We thank God. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, that whole thing with Bob, you know, you, you had that relationship. You you witnessed him giving his life to Christ. Um, yeah, very special time um, that could never really be eradicated or, or forgotten about, most definitely. Um, Tommy, you've no, done no, so Bob much. Had certain of, yeah, Bob you've had a certain amount of spiritual um, thing about him, you know, from ever since, you know, from the day that he was singing, Thank You, Lord. And one love and all of these songs. Yeah, for Studio One. Mm -hmm. Redemption songs were really. And um I I also believe that today, that through the gospel, if we if we lean towards um establishing some of the works, I think somebody had asked me, what would have Bob be doing today if he were doing gospel? I think he would be carrying that message. And a lot of that message is out there today in the gospel. As a matter of fact, I must mention that um, my wife, Colleen, um, she recently did um, No Regrets. No Regrets. Um, written yeah. By, 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 written by Norris Rear. Yeah. But some of the songs like Jamaica Belongs to Jesus, The Silent Is Jesus, um, Let the Church Unite, you know, um, is some of the songs that we believe even through the gospel today would bring to, to get people together. You know, yeah, and, uh, and I, I totally, I totally agree with you. I believe that if Bob was alive today, he would, we, we yeah. would be witnessing Bob Marley singing yeah. gospel songs and giving praises unto um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Right? Yes, his title was was given to him um, on the baptism. Um, Berhane Selassie, um, light of the Trinity. Um, which means to shine the light of the Trinity, to bring it out to the people. And this he would have, because he was he was um, baptized in November, but he died um, in May the following year. The following year. Um, the following I year. believe that if he had lived on, he would really have brought that to fruition. I mean, like, there was nothing else to do but to tell the truth. Yeah. yeah. And the Bible says that the truth will set you free. Let's move on um, from, from that now. Um, so you've done so much over the years, Tommy. You've done so much. You've, you've um, lived a, a real full life of helping people discover who they are through their music production, things of that nature. Um, one of my earliest memories of you is... Um, your stage presence where you introduced Bob Marley and then went on to do things like um, the biggest, some of the biggest concerts and events in Jamaica, Sting being one of them. Um, you were the production manager for Sting, right? Tell us about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Sting, Sting, <laughs> Sting is run by a man called Isaiah Ling. Yes. Um, an ex-cop. And um, we met under some circumstances years ago. Don't tell me that he it, was going to arrest you, Tommy, please. He was going to arrest me <laughs> in the middle of, of Linstead. And I drove my car into the marketplace. And because I really thought he was a gunman and, and not a cop. But then I realized he was a cop. And so I went into the marketplace and I said, people... Some gunman after me. <laughs> but anyway, they took me to the police station because in this whole confrontation, I tried to run him over um, on the road on his bike. And uh, because he was he was in plain clothes and I know that he had a gun. And um, after they, they charged me and 
all of that for indecent language and reckless driving, etc. He um, he came by to my house and said, "You couldn't. You could have explained who you were, you know." And um, I would not have. We would not have come to all of this. <laughs> and then we started talking, and he said, "You know something? I want to do a show, you know." And um, so he started, and that's the story of Sting. My wife, Carleen, became the secretary. We started it in my, my home, and um, it became the biggest one-night reggae festival in the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Sting, um, I was a, like a battle through an event in some instances. But really, a, 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 a good event. Where I was the Where was the first thing held? Where was it held? The, the first one. Ah, uh, the first thing was held. Was it Cinema Two? Wasn't Cinema it's Two. Cinema Two. Cinema yeah. Two. Okay. Yeah. And and today is it? It's still it's still running, right? No, it has not been on for the last couple of years because of COVID it, and stuff. It, um, it has not been on. Uh, I don't. They have not had one since COVID. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Yeah. But, but you've I've also on... been involved in reggae sun splash, as you know. Okay. I hosted reggae sun splash for many years. Um, started first at a thing called reggae sun and ting. Um, I did reggae sun splash. I did over maybe internationally about hundreds of reggae sun splash shows. The host. Um, doing reggae sun splash in Africa. I did the Bob Marley, um, Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, concert. yeah. In Africa, that was another historic. Very concert. memorable, yes. And Bob did about his third song. Some seven thousand prisoners broke jail. Yes. To come to see the reggae king. Oh yeah, this was amazing. And broke down the gates, broke down the prison walls, broke down the gates, and came in and sat down in in that stadium. Yeah. In front of Prince Charles and all of those guys, that oh my were God. There. Um, President Mugabe and um, Prime Minister Mugabe and President Banana and all the African leaders were there to see that. Bob Marley on his third song, like, wow. And they had to stop that concert and they started back and he was only able to finish up with a few songs. Yeah, we did all of that. And of course, yeah. And, and and today and today, Tommy, you know, you did like you know, you just explained Sting and everything and and and, and stuff like that. But um, it's I'm right in saying that you also um, founded and have uh, one of the biggest um, gospel um, events uh, that the that yes. held on the island as well. Tell us about the the creation of Fun in the Sun. Yeah, Fun in the Sun. Um... When it started out back a few years, I mean, in 2002, when I had concerns about what I was seeing happening at spring break um, in Jamaica, the kids come in here and they get into the sexual thing and the, the drugs and all of that. And I said, wow. Um, so my, my son, who's now a pastor, Pastor Che, I said, let's find an alternative to this. He, um, thing that's happening in music that's not right and he said dad give me three days on the north coast of Jamaica and I'll tell you what to do and so I gave him a hotel trip for three days and he came back and I says um he says it's, it's called fun in the sun I said fun in the sun we already have sun splash mm. you, you know reggae sun and team said not that sun dad we are talking about the S-O-N that made the S-U-N. All Fun right. The <laughs> and yes, we started that off at about the third year or the fourth year, I decided I could not go any further. And God just gave, I was with Miles Monroe, the late Dr. Miles Monroe, yeah. who was one of the speakers who would come down because we would have done that event for like three weeks and um we had like conferences and things for young people and street evangelism and uh, music by this by the riverside and then we had the, the concert 
but we were losing so much money, lots and lots of money. And then God turned it around. I had owed a lot of bills and I went to some some folks to borrow some money um, and they said yes they would um, okay and I would have like seven years to to pay it back and one of the um one of the persons said no you're not lending him any money don't you see what he's trying to do I got so afraid and this lady says you see what he's trying to do I thought you would mean you know seem trying to take away your money he's trying to save these kids fellas don't lend him any money give him the money and so wow. they gave me the money to pay off my bills and gave me money bought out the tickets for the next year of about eight thousand tickets my goodness and um the rest is history they said make it um make it be free so that everybody would come because if it's free it's not just christians gonna come everybody would come everybody. and because you have the type of people like papa san and carlene etc chevelle franklin you know Tucker, they were known people in the secular world yeah and so up to this day i still give much thanks to the jamaica brothers group and the best dressed chicken for being such a great sponsor they are brilliant we give so God thanks today we have been able to go to haiti to yeah. have um, fun in the sun. We have had fun in the sun in in New York City. Yep. And um, we're going to be having fun in the sun again the next time. Look out for it. Can't say anything now, but it will be bigger than. And we have had up to eight and a hundred thousand persons Tommy, coming out to this event. Tommy, Tommy, yes. Tommy. When are we going to have fun in the sun in the UK? <laughs> we need to have uh, fun in the sun in the UK. Again, I, I want to come next year. Good. You know, we tried it before. I'll help you. I'll help you. We, we tried it before, you know. Really? And, um, oh, yeah. Can't remember which year we tried to have our fun in the sun um, there. Um, it did work a little bit, but we okay. still have to find the right way to do it. Okay. I'm going to help you on that one, Tommy. I'm going to yes. help you on that one. We need to have fun in the sun in the UK and yes. have the biggest, biggest, fun in the sun that this world yes, has sir. ever seen i'm going to help you on that one and fun so, in the sun fun in the sun next fun in the sun we do what we call a community engagement i'm um, going to communities and try to change communities um that's a smaller side of fun in the sun like what we did last year we went into one community with 71 gangs etc etc and um made a lot of changes in there but next time we are going in the biggest venue in Jamaica. Um, look out for it. It's coming up very soon. Okay. And, and that's this year. That's this year. This Your year. Persons come. Yes. Okay, good. Sounds good to me. Yeah. So, Fun in the Sun, big, 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 big event. Um, and you started in Jamaica, but you're, you're beginning to branch out into different parts of the world, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, yes. So what's next for Tommy? Because, I mean, you know, you've got all of these different things that you've done over the years. I know that Carleen is a major factor for you. She's got new releases coming out, left, right, and center. We're currently playing on um, one of my radio shows. We're playing No Regrets, which was written by Dr. Norris Ware. Um, is yeah. Carleen going to bring out another album? Or is yes, it just she has be an singles? album in the pipeline right now. Okay. Um, very much so. Yeah. And let me ask yes, you this question because your daughter, Naomi, she's doing very yes. well as well, isn't she? She's kind of creating a bit of a oh, storm. Yes. Tell yes, us, a, yes, tell yes. us about, tell us about Naomi. What is she up to right well, now? Well, Naomi is actually either in Switzerland or Germany today. My goodness. Yeah. She just, like you know, she just finished um, with Eldris uh, uh, a video. She has a video out now with the song, We Run the Area. Um, and she's over Europe there right now as we speak, um, doing doing her thing. Doing her but thing. She, she had, um, she's been making her, her 
God bless you, man. A great positive move in the music industry right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. I just and, love um, her music, Tommy. I love her music. Yeah. And um, yeah. yeah, we're going to see some development there, I'm sure. Cause we're you proud. know, I, I, I really love, the, the, she has a song called Climbing. Yes. I love climbing a lot. I know, um, um, Lollipop, um, her, her other song that was, was quite big there, um, Paradise Plum. Paradise Plum. Yeah. Yeah. Paradise Plum. Like, big tune. Yeah, Paradise big Plum. Tune. And um, and she has also did a, a, a take on um, Things You Say You Love, You're Gonna Lose. My goodness. Yeah. My goodness. So yeah. she had a, she had a yeah. chance to re-record that for you. Yeah, man. She has some amazing videos on YouTube. I know. And, uh, I know. Yeah. She is an amazing young lady, so talented. I can see where she gets it from, most definitely. And your son, yeah. you mentioned that um, Cheng is a, a pastor, right? Yes, yeah, Cheng is a pastor in a place called Victorville. Okay. In um, in in California, and my daughter is um Sarah. She she goes all over the world as an evangelist. She's a preacher. She preached um, for many years in the church. She started um, over there in, in Texas. And, but now she's branched out internationally. And she has an album coming out too. Okay. Um, yeah. And our son Nathan is all over the Caribbean. Um, he does productions for governments and stuff like that. He just left here this morning again to... Um, British Virgin Islands and some other islands. And um, her daughter, Naomi, uh, not Naomi, um, Shikisha, Shikita. is headed up the, um, yeah, the Glory Music Organization. Yes. So, yeah, we're doing all right. The family's <laughs> doing well. The family's doing well. And, yeah, just, to be, and just to be clear, the, the Glory Music is one of the, the record labels that you established some time ago. Tommy, I've got a few yes. questions. I uh, when I knew that I was going to do this interview, Tommy, I, I I reached out to a few people and said, "Look, if there was any questions that you could ask Tommy, what would that be?" Um, <laughs> somebody that you because you've made trips to the UK quite a few times, and I remember there was a time where you actually came to the area in which um, I live c currently, an area called um, uh, well, it's in Northamptonshire. Let's put it that way. And uh, the person that you hanged out with at the time remembered an incident that happened, and he he said to ask you this question: Do you still drink Blue Mountain coffee? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> I still I still have a cup of my Blue Mountain coffee every day. Every I just day, one cup of coffee a day. But that Blue Mountain coffee that I drink is the best coffee in the world. Most definitely. Most definitely, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, uh, here's another question that was uh, sent to me. Does Tommy feel that reggae music enhances the message of Christ globally? Um, as, you know, like on the same level as, as Bob Marley. Do you feel that way? I, 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 I believe, you know, I, we did a concert once. And um, it was the Gospel Music Organization of the United States. And um, we, we were actually the last act on the stage. Yes. And um, Colleen went up. And when she did, the, well, the first thing, the people waited until the last act because they knew she was from Jamaica. Right. And because she's from Jamaica, it, it had a, quite an excitement. Um, and she sang, this island, this island needs Jesus. Jesus. And they came up and said, no, we want this song to be saying, New York needs Jesus, America, Germany, and all. I believe that reggae music is like water being poured up on dry ground. It just sucks it up. It's a matter of opportunity. Because reggae music continues to be that musical vibe going to the four corners of the world. 
to unite people of all race, all class, all creed, all religion. It's uniting the people for God. But there will be resistance to it. But as long as we continue, the music of Bob Marley had an international message and a flavor because you still be mystified or people are still mystified. Why people dance to a music with such a serious message? Yeah? But when you look at it, the foundation of Bob was gospel. And when you look at why, when he started with the songs like Thank You Lord, One Love, and all of these songs, and if you were close to his family and, and knew what his mother, when you even think of Three Little Birds and these songs, you know, um, they're, they're all maybe not, not verses from the Bible, but in today's atmosphere in today's world if we're still writing the bible a lot of these songs of consciousness togetherness peace love truth unity you know righteousness would would still be written as today's bible and i believe that reggae music given the opportunity carrying the undiluted truth to the people can affect the entire world through gospel because gospel is not just the church the church is where you go to learn when you go outside the church is where you exercise what you have learned Amen. when you go outside the church is where you reach and touch people the church is a school where you you get teachings and then you go out you share that teaching with people so you have to carry that message out there. And that is why we still are carrying that message out to the people. In reality, you must love one another. It's not a matter about how much of the Bible you learn. It's did you look for your neighbor this morning and find out how you are doing? Did Absolutely. you look on a chat, guide them in the right direction? This is the way to go. This is is what it is and that is how we will have that effect um because truth be told bob marley's real effect came many years after yeah many years after he sold more records since he died than he did before when he was know, alive all of yeah that we have seen yeah exodus yes <laughs> movement of the people mm. Like I've said throughout the interview, Tommy, you have done so much, so, so, so much. And I want to sort of highlight some of your achievements. Um, you know, God has blessed you with being recognized with a stack of awards. My goodness. Um, like I said uh, in part one, that stems from the 1987 right up to the year 2021. Um, veteran Gospel Promoter uh, 2019, Fun in the Sun, most rated event of the year, um, Pioneer Award of Honour, that's the, the Martins International Reggae Award, most rated event for uh, the Sterling Gospel Music Awards. The Gleaner recognised you, Tommy. The Gleaner recognised you. My <laughs> goodness. Um so much, glory so to much, God. Tommy. You know, we give God, we give God um, all of the glory and honor. Um, Lifetime Achievement Award tribute to the Great Sixteen. Explain that one, because when I read that, I was like, tribute to the Great Sixteen. Is that a spelling error, or what does it mean? Uh, tribute to the Greats. The Greats. Well, tribute to the Greats was is an event that they would um, they would recognize. Um, the contributors to the music, yes, the building of the music over over the years, okay. and um, right. So okay, so that that, that, that is great. I just have great people around me. <laughs> in in the year nineteen ninety three, you was uh, given an award for being the best MC from the Jamaican Federation of Musicians uh, Merit Award. 
Um, like I, I mentioned earlier on, one of the first times I came across you is when you were in your role as an MC. Them days, uh, sh- sh- surely um, spawned some really good memories because you bu- you brought on some really um, strong, talented people in the industry, right? Over the years, yeah. And well, uh, yes, um, you were recognised for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Well, MC work has, has also took me right across the world, right across um, the globe. Because, um, even as far as um, if I were to show you some of the posters yeah um, in japan and these places my goodness that um i go as an mc but they put the mc if i show you the mc picture photo yeah. is four times as large <laughs> as as the artist coming on in, in the, in so the they place they place know? more importance on you than the artists that were headlining <laughs> yeah yeah so that was just a, a great time um but um i never took it for granted and just thought that it was this was quite a bit of work i really do my homework when i'm going out to do a show most definitely I days to get and know that but the mc is not going there to be the star of the event the mc is there to hold the thing together so if the, the thing about holding the event together is saying nothing then say nothing don't go out there and try to be the star. In today's world, you see a lot of MC go out there. They even start singing the people them song before they come yeah, out. Yeah, before stage. they even come out. You know? Yeah. I tell yeah, you this one, yeah. one little secret quickly is that when I went out there and as an MC and doing Bob in Europe, did I need to introduce Bob? 60,000 people coming out there and I'm trying to tell them who Bob is? No. <laughs> No All need. I went out there to do was the guy was just playing each day, doom doom, to do do doom 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 male, to do 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 doom doom male, to do 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 male, and then he would arrive from the back, Ire, to do 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 doom doom Ire, and that's the introduction. You know, but in that year he made a song and he made a song. No no no, he was doing this before. Toots was that. No 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 no. No need. No need. As a matter of fact, that is one of the reasons why I'm being invited to New York. And I have to um, give a couple of my renowned introductions that yes. I had to do. Maybe for people like Marcel Griffiths or Dennis Brown. And they were known internationally um, how these were done. And yeah. yeah. So great times. There was a skill to that. <laughs> yeah. Great times. Um, so. As we uh, near the end of our interview, maybe there's some people out there that um, um, might want to reach out to you. How would one get hold of you if um, they wanted to uh, book you or Carleen or anyone in your organization? How would they go about doing that? Is there a website, any social uh, networks? Yeah. Uh, uh, Carleen, have her, her site, she just put up Carleen. Davis Cowan and you will see. Yeah. Um and we are Glory Music. Um, um Yeah, pretty uh, easy really. So people can just Google it's easy, you. yeah. Yeah, they can Google yeah. Glory Music and all the information will come up right there. You're right. Tommy, thank you so yeah. much for your time. Thank you for the for our two parter. You've uh, revealed a lot about yourself and the industry, the people that you've worked with over the years. Um, you know, the successes, um, some of the challenges that you've been through over the years as well. Um, and um, we look forward to what God's going to be doing for you as you continue your journey, because it's it doesn't look like it's going to slow down at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> no time no, to slow no. down. <laughs> no, when you're busy, you're busy. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. But I'm, I'm so pleased yeah, that but- you've taken the time. What were you going to say, Tommy? Yeah, man. Well, thank you. Just want to um, thank you one more time. And um, to all your viewers and your listeners, um, I just want to remind everybody that um, you are with potential. You are with God. And inside of you, there's so much more inside of you than it's outside of you. And everything that God has in himself, he has put into you. So you are created with purpose. And to remind you, as he says, 
his promises for you is to prosper you and keep you in good health and in you is potential bless thank you so much tommy cohen thank you so much well there you have it another great one for you this one is for the record books most definitely so um i do thank you for uh you know looking over part one and two uh remember if you do like what you see on the channel then please consider subscribing like share and uh we we'll catch up with you again next time. Grantly saying, God bless you. Um, look more.